Hi guys, it's Matt here from MCS Books and today I'm going to do another episode of Bad Book, Good Movie. Now if you don't know what this series is, it's where I take a bad book, that I found bad at least, and match it with a good film director and then discuss the ways that the film director could probably enhance the book, etc, etc. And since we are now in the month of February, I'm going to be matching all of the bad books this month with a female director. So let us begin with the book today. Now, this book isn't necessarily a bad book. It's just a book that I personally found disappointing. The book itself is well written and lots of people really like this book. And I like this book too. I just expected more from it and therefore upon reading it, I was disappointed. And that book is this one. Um, Philip Pullman's Book of Dust, Volume 1, La Belle Sauvage. Now, this is the first of a trilogy um, which is connected or within the same world from his Dark Materials. This book is split into two parts where we meet Malcolm who lives and works at the Trout Inn. And we kind of focus on his life there as things begin to sort of happen and unravel. And then the second part is a is the journey with Malcolm and Lyra as a baby as they go to find Lyra's father. So that's, that's basically the simple premise of this book. What I found very disappointing was that it felt like Philip Pullman himself kind of forgot a few things about his Dark Materials. There are a few things in here that kind of went against things that happened in his Dark Materials trilogy. Um, he kind of takes this world also in a very new and strange direction, which kind of seemed very disjointed from the world that we grew used to in the last trilogy. Um, like I said, the writing is really great and the villain in this story is truly very, very creepy. This book is certainly not a children's book. It is very dark and there is some language and themes that are very inappropriate for children. But overall, I just expected more. I find that Philip Pullman, albeit a very intellectual man, writes so accessibly, but this book, I just feel like he tried too hard to coat the story in allegory and erudition. That then made it feel a lot difficult to connect and go along with the story. There are parts of this book that requires like a prior knowledge of certain literature history which if you don't know, then kind of goes over your head and just makes things in this book seem completely random and out of sorts. And I feel because he doesn't give it any explanation, it's kind of very much keeping you out of the story, as if it's a sort of elite story as part of this very rich literature history and that you must know in order to access, which I find very disturbing coming from Portman, who I feel oftentimes isn't like that. What I loved most about his Dark Materials trilogy was that each book, while part of a trilogy, could in a way stand by itself and you could read, read one and really get into the world and understand it. This book is definitely not one that can stand alone. It's the first of a trilogy, but this just feels like it's setting up for the next books and I kind of wanted it to be more of its own identity. And, so, and considering that the next two books are going to be set so many years after this one, it kind of just felt like this was just an extended prologue, which was definitely disappointing. So, I'm now going to match this with a film director who I believe can make it better. Now, we all know that His Dark Materials, The Northern Lights, or as the Americans called it, Golden Compass, was made into a film, and it failed due to the religious aspects of the film which didn't paint Christianity in the best of lights, its popularity waned and therefore the next two books weren't made into films. So of course this book probably will follow that theme and not be made into a film, however I feel that if it was it could be improved greatly, specifically by one director. This director has worked a lot with a production company called Cartoon Saloon. They are an animation house, kind of like the Irish version of Studio Ghibli. Her name is Nora Twomey and she has directed two short films, um, she's co-directed a feature film and she's only just recently directed another feature film which I believe is going to be massive. 
soon enough. So let's think about why she will make this book a much better film. First of all, let me say this, that one of the biggest ideals from Nora, but also from the Cartoon Saloon, is the fact that the artistic style of their movies is beautiful. All of their films have such wonderful artwork that just makes you fall in love with them. Now, I know that this is not Nora Twomey's personal addition to the enhancement of this book, but being part of the production company Cartoon Saloon will really enhance the visuals of this book. The first film is called From Darkness, and this is a short film, and actually I'll link it down below if you want to watch it. It's very short and it's quite cute. It is a kind of visual retelling of a Nordic myth. It takes the folk tales of sort of the Northern European histories and then just makes it into a very short film without any words, without any dialogue, and it's so simple yet so wonderful at the same time. Now this is something that I think she can bring to the table with the Book of Dust. Within this book there are lots of elements of British and Celtic folk history and imagery, which I believe she will be able to then look at, examine and really enlighten. But also she discusses in her interviews how she believes animation can really enhance meaning and that you can actually put more image and saturate the meaning of animated films than you can in live action films. Now I'm not saying that this book should specifically be an animated film, but since that's the format that she works the best in, I think that she could actually really do something very special with it. And there are most certainly elements to this that, while CGI these days can do an excellent job of, animation could just be a really interesting tool to explore these themes and the images within it. So I believe that if she goes through this with a fine comb and takes out all of this sort of linguistic imagery of folk history, of fairy tale and whimsy, she can really find a sort of anchor almost of this story. And what I mean by this anchor is that she'll be able to then bring it all together in a way that kind of makes it feel less disjointed and less of just a prologue. For the book, it's split into two parts, and the first part and the second part are just almost two completely different stories, just with the same characters. If we had this imagery going throughout, it would kind of connect the two. I feel like visualising this through her direction would then allow the audience member to actually connect a lot more and to understand a lot more the inter intertextuality of this book that they may have missed when reading it. The second aspect, I want to look at her film that she co-directed, and it's called The Secret of the Kells. This film, again, is just visually stunning, and it's a quite a quiet film. It's very slow and unfurling and luxurious, and it's just such a pleasure to watch. This film balances the topics of religion and folklore at a time where the two were very just disjointed, but she, she is able to then bring them together and to show how one affects the other and vice versa. And it was really beautiful to watch her examine these topics, yet just entrench it with Irish culture and magic. And it was just stunning. She takes figures from the Irish mythology and brings them into a story which is predominantly about Christianity and the Book of the Kells, which is ultimately a Christian text. But the whole examination of this is, is done in a way that really allows you to not feel like you're being preached to or to understand the fluidity of religion and folk culture in a way that should really be more embraced by popular society. But also the imagery itself of the Book of Kells and the, the story behind this and the story of the film is something that I just feel has so much potential with this book. There's a part of this journey that goes into the world of the Fairy Queen, which is where this sort of intertextuality really comes in, and without that knowledge, you, you kind of feel a bit confused. And I feel that the way that the Book of Kells is told and introduced in The Secret of the Kells could be a way that the Fairy Queen story, or like the imagery at least in the Book of Dust, could be introduced within the film, which allows the reader, even without that prior knowledge, to actually understand and get on board with. For I knew nothing about the Book of Kells before I watched this movie, and actually, the first time after I watched this movie, I didn't even think that it would be a real thing. It wasn't until I was later looking into the history of the film 
that I realised that the Book of Kells is an actual artefact. But the way that I was just able to accept it and the way that the story was told to me and presented to me, like both visually and narratively, was done in a way that I could really connect with. And I feel that that's something that I wasn't able to do with this book. I wasn't able to connect with that story or that kind of idea and concept. So I feel Nora Twomey will introduce it in a way that isn't arrogant, that isn't from a position of erudition, and is more grounded in the everyday sharing of culture and history that I feel Pullman might have missed a little bit in this one. And finally, let's look at Nora Twomey's most recent film that may not be out in some parts of the world yet, um, but it is definitely one you should keep your eye out for. It is called The Breadwinner, and it is based on a book which shows that Nora Twomey can adapt books. And it follows a girl in Afghanistan, I think, whose father is abducted by the Taliban, and she then must get rid of her femininity to be able to take on the position of the man and the breadwinner in the family to help support those that she loves. Now, the topic of this story is universal and should be told to both adults and children alike. There are topics in this book that I feel have that same need to be discussed. However, the way that it's done in this book is definitely for adults and not suitable for children. So I believe Nora Twomey can be able to take this and actually make it suitable for both adults and children and make it sort of accessible to handle these topics maturely and sensitively. Also, The Breadwinner is about children in a world where they must take on the role of adults, that they have been forced to take on this responsibility that shouldn't be put on a child. And it's very similar to this book. There are themes where children must have to take on the role of the adults and they're not prepared for it, but they just have to do it. Nora Twomey will be able to tell that story in a way that can really connect to lots of people. And she says herself about animation that Animation itself allows you to empathise more with characters, whereas a live action retelling of a, of a horrific or quite traumatic experience actually ends up creating more space between the audience and the characters because it is just so uncomfortable to watch and it's almost a little bit too real that the audience will just switch off because they don't want to accept the reality almost. So handling these topics through animation could be a really great tool to actually start discussion about it and start talking about it and to allow adults and children alike to see themselves in the characters that are pre presented in this book. And of course, with The Breadwinner, there are certainly topics about religion and culture. Topics as such in this book, which has lots of biblical imagery, particularly of the flood story. So knowing that Nora Twomey has this sort of language and this ability to tell these stories without causing offence kind of allows you to imagine that a retelling of this could be done without causing offence to the Christian audiences that kind of disallowed the original trilogy to be made into film. So that is my idea for how The Book of Dust, La Belle Sauvage, could be made into a better movie. And just remember again, I'm not saying that it was a bad book, it was just a disappointing book for me. But I would love to hear your opinions, especially if you have read this book or if you have seen any of Nora Twomey's films, let me know what you think about this adaptation idea, whether you think it'd be, it'd be great as an animated film or not. Do you think it needs to be live action to be told? I'd love to hear your feedback in the comments below. And I hope you liked this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and you can always subscribe to my channel if you're not already. And I'll see you next time for another video. Bye bye.